Let me share with you some thoughts on secondary trauma, but I think you guys, again, sort of hit it. Self-awareness is a great place to start. Um, so what's help and, and the other good news is what's helpful with burnout strategies is also very applicable here to secondary trauma. So we want to self with start with self-awareness, signs of trauma. Again, there are assessment tools that are available for you, and I will include those in the document that you'll get in the follow-up email after tonight's session. If you are exhibiting signs of secondary trauma, um, do consider getting treatment. There are several websites that will help you find a trauma specialist in your area. If you're hit with trauma, you, you, you want to be able to work from a place of, of emotional strength, right? So this is another reason why self-care and work-life balance are going to be very helpful in supporting that emotional health and provide that strength. Support groups for trauma survivors can also help you create connections with others who understand and empathize. I think empathy is something that someone mentioned in the chat already. Understanding and, and um, connecting with people who can come alongside you and understand exactly what you're going through can be, be very healing. And spiritual disciplines, spiritual communities can also provide solace and support in times of severe stress. Self-compassion. Um, Many of you have probably heard that term. It's a hot topic in psychology right now. It basically means that we are extending to ourselves the same compassion and the same level of care that we would extend to another person that we really, really care about, right? So we treat ourselves in the same way that we would want to, or we treat, yeah, we treat ourselves in the same way that we treat other people. So there are three uh, pieces of self-compassion. One is we treat ourselves with the same kindness, the same warmth, the same understanding that we would treat another person that we love. The second piece of it is rather than judging ourselves when we have negative feelings, we, we say, oh man, I'm, I'm so stressed out, I'm getting irritable, I'm getting angry, I'm getting impatient. And we tend to judge ourselves for those feelings. Instead of that, we try to accept the negative feelings that we're feeling and explore them in an open, open and curious and non-judgmental way. Like, okay, well, this is, this is what I'm feeling right now. I wonder why I'm feeling that way. And I wonder what I can do about it. Just sort of accepting those emotions for what they are. And the third thing is remembering that we often share our suffering with others. So understanding that we're all sort of in the same boat, common humanity, this helps us not over-identify with our, our negative feelings right now and helps to put them in larger perspective. So those are the pieces that come from research. I love the thoughts that are coming through in the chat as well. Um, one question that's coming up is how effective is journaling? Journaling is, is incredibly important because it allows us to sort of dig through and, and sort of take a journey through our own emotions to the point where we can start understanding what lies behind those emotions. What are the thought patterns? that are leading us to feel certain ways. So I think that journaling is really helpful in trying to understand why we are where we are emotionally, and then maybe some thoughts about how we can get ourselves out. 